world. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today I'm sitting down with Justine Skye. The R&B singer has had a huge year. She released her first album, Ultraviolet, in January, and quickly followed that up by one of my favorite songs, Know Myself. Today she's here to talk about her new music, including her latest single, Build, where she takes a stand against domestic violence. Everyone put your hands together for Justine Skye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. First of all, how are you today? I'm actually really good today. I'm having a great, great day. Good. Even though it's so dark outside, it's like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I know, I know, but it's raining, it's cold. But I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be here with all of you guys. I see some of my day ones in the front. <laughs> this is awesome. And I'm sure you're happy to talk about a project that is so near and dear to you. So we just saw the video, and we're going to dig into that a little bit later. But first, tell me some inspiration behind writing this song, Build? Um, well, the song was actually like written before I was actually in a session um, with the Rascals, um, who produced this record. And they were like getting to know me, he was getting to know me, and um, we were just talking, we were writing, and we also have some other amazing songs that you'll hear on the project. But after like getting to know me for a while, he was like, hey, I have this song, I think you should hear it. Like, after just hearing me rant and, like, just, oh, my God, this guy did this, and you don't even want to know what's happened. And he was like, hmm, I think you should hear this. And I heard it, and I instantly fell in love with it. And I was like, so so I can cut the song right now? And then he was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, like, sure. But then it took, like, a while. And actually, like, um, I want, he was like, no, I want you, like, to live with it. Like, I really want you, like, to to understand and make sure that, like, you love this song. He's like, because this song is special to me, so I just want to make sure that it's special to you as well. So I lived with it, and the more I listened to it, the more I just, like, felt connected to it, and that's exactly what music does. And, um, yeah, I Aaron Ray was having a session with them, and basically I just, like, invaded the session, and I was like, yeah, I'll just wait till he's done so I can cut the song, because I'm ready now. <laughs> and then, like, Aaron was taking a break, so I started cutting the song, and I was like, how about... You just get on this, Aaron. And he was like, sure. Like He's so chill. And it was just like, yeah, like sure, why not? Because we were talking just about relationships and like cheating and just, just all of it. And it was getting really like deep and emotional. And I was like, you know what? Why don't you go put that in the song? So that kind of happened on accident, the collaboration? He yeah. Wasn't always, it wasn't always supposed to be yeah. the two of you. just sort of happened. Mm -hmm. It was just supposed to be me by myself. And I was like, you know what? Aaron's such a great artist. And he's a new artist as well, too. And so, and I really feel like people should just know more about his music. Cause he's awesome. So I was just like, you know what? Like, Why don't you just get on this? His voice is beautiful. And I, I love having the male voice in there as well. Because yeah. the things he says, like, if you could build me, mm -hmm. you could see me. And it would be, you know, but I'm just kind of human. And yeah. Do you think that was important to kind of elevate the song even more and drive home that point, especially when you see the video. Yeah, um, actually um, the video and the concept for the video um, wasn't always like there. Like it, it wasn't always there. How did that come about then? Um, well, it, I went through it and um, I just felt like instead of letting it like build up inside of me, like it was something that I needed to share and in doing that it was very therapeutic for me and um, helped me a lot in in a way of just like expressing that like getting this like weight off my chest and or just like walking around with this like secret that was like that only like I knew and like a couple other people and I just felt like it was important to express that because there are a lot of women out there that are going through the same thing a lot of women that were in my life that I didn't even know were going through that situation but because I chose to like come out about it decide to share their stories with me and thank me for being brave enough to even do so what was sort of your final point where you felt like you could go to your team and be like, I think this would be a good concept? What finally got you to that place of wanting to tell your story? Um, I guess it was just like, I wanted to talk about it, but I didn't know how. And because it was driving me crazy and it was like eating me alive. It was like, it was really like a really dark point in my life. And I felt like I needed to put my focus on something. And so I didn't really care what anyone like thought because a lot of people were just like, hey, we don't want you to be like that girl or like, and I don't think that I will be that girl. I, it, this isn't something that's gonna define me for the rest of my life. It's just a part of my story. And I'm not ashamed to share or like hide 
any aspect of me. Like, if you really, like, truly know me, you know I'm, like, an open book. Maybe I'm a bit too open. But, uh, <laughs> um, and some of my friends say that's a great thing, and it's, like, a scary thing at the same time, because, like, they're, like, you just trust people, like, way too much. And I'm just, like, I just didn't think that they would just go around telling my business like that. But it's, like, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't want to live my life, like, with something to hide, so... I think you hit the nail on the head when you said when you shared your story, more and more women in your life started sharing their story. Yeah. And domestic violence is something that affects, I think they, 24 people per minute are victims of some sort of abuse. So I think you sharing your story, and, and again in the video, showing all the different manifestations of abuse, right? The sort of different scenarios that these women are going through. Yeah. So how did you guys decide what stories to sort of highlight? Well... The uh, I wanted the video to be representative of what I went through, and um, I chose to have the same guy and different women because a lot of the times you feel like because like even some women know that a guy has like put their hands on someone in the past, but they just like won't believe it'll happen to them, which is I'm guilty of that, like and. I was just like, I don't think I would ever like do anything for like someone like like what would I, what would I do? Like I'm not I'm not gonna do anything for that to ever happen to me. Like no guy would ever put their hands on me until it's like happening to you, and then you're just like, what did I do wrong? Like wh where did I go wrong, and how could I have prevented this? And like why would he do something like this to me? And it's not your fault. And a lot of women like sit there, and they're in these like they're in these relationships because they're s trying to figure out what they did wrong and it was nothing like it really is just this person like battling their own demons and and insecurities and taking it out on you because it for some reason they'll think that it makes them feel better and that's not the case and in doing that you're sitting there trying to help them and there's really like nothing you can do in the situation. You just have to think about yourself. A lot of men and women who are abused make excuses for their abuse. Oh, I even like in just relationships in general, like you know, I've, I'm guilty of just making excuses for guys. Like, oh, he didn't call me because maybe he's just tired, or like, you know, like we just like to make excuses because we don't want to believe what's right in front of our face sometimes. And I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I'm thinking about myself. I'm being a little bit more selfish and not passive and, and really just like thinking about my happiness instead of, I feel like I was so worried about making sure that my partner was like happy or like people around me like were happy and focused on like not trying to hurt people's feelings and like, all right, maybe like, I'm fine, I'll do this just because like I just, I don't wanna deal with like the argument or whatever and it's just like, no, I have to, I have to think about myself first now. Like it's time for me to to be a little bit more selfish in my decisions. And what was that journey like for you? Because I'm sure getting out of that situation, you probably had to sit with it for a little bit and really focus on yourself. So what has that journey been like for you? What are some of the things you do for self care and just to make sure you're taking care of you? Um, in the beginning it was really uh, difficult and I didn't know what I was gonna do. Like I didn't know I was so, angry I was so hurt by by this person who was supposed to like love me I was so hurt by my friends who were supposed to be by my side and were supposed to love me and ended up showing me their true colors that they cared more about the clout than they did about our friendship and um, it was kind of rough because I felt like I was alone and that there was no way for me to for my voice to be heard, like it didn't matter. And which also is what inspired me to share this through um, my art. And I guess I just had to, I had to think about myself and I took the initiative to go like see someone. I was really scared to like see a therapist. A lot of people like there's such like a stigma, especially against like in the black community against like going to therapy. And, and so I was really like nervous and just going to talk into this random person. Like how's this random person supposed to tell me what I'm supposed to do in my life? They don't even like, how do they know what to do in their own life? Like I was like going to this whole, like just talking to myself, like what am I doing? Like, what is this? Like, I don't know, what are these emotions that I'm feeling? Like I'm so scared and I'm so hurt and angry and I just don't know what to do. And then I was like, you know what? I'm really into like crystals and like 
spiritual things. Let me go. My friend was like, hey, like I went to this reader. Like I think it would be really awesome. I think you should see him. It helped me a lot. And so I went and we did this whole like energy cleansing ceremony and we just talked about everything and I cried and pulled cards and like it really it really helped me a lot. Like a lot some people like think like that's weird, like why would you do that? But it helped me a lot, even if it's not real or if it is real, like it just was uh something that it was something to help me get through it and um I still like do the things like I wake up every morning and like think of five things that I'm very appreciative for and five things that I'm thankful for and that I, I love about the world and stuff like that. And it helps. It helps. Like the little things help. Even just like smiling at someone walking in the street or like helping someone out and just talking to someone for a little bit, like it can help you a lot and it helps that person a lot too. You never know what someone's going through in their life. And we say it all the time, like to be nice and positive and sending people love and light and praying. But it's like you actually have to do that, not just say it. I mean, therapy comes in so many different forms. So everything you've talked about, I've done and the women in my life have, have done. And I think it's so important for your fans to hear you talk about that because people suffer from depression and anxiety and try to deal with things on their own. And I think like you are an influencer. You are somebody who your fans definitely respect and love. So I think it means so much, especially in the black community for you to speak out against, you know, ab about going to therapy and, and yeah. really like doing something for yourself. I mean, I think mental health is really, um, I feel like it's a really important topic that a lot of people don't really talk about. I mean, it's getting talked about a lot now these days, but I mean, like it's just really hard, man. Like with social media and everything, just people think everything is a joke. Like every single thing is a joke. Like someone can, God forbid, get hit by a car right here and it, they blast it all over social media and be like, oh my God, well, maybe you should have waited for the car. Like just something stupid. Like everyone always has to make a little comment. It's just, we're so like desensitized to like what's going on in the world because there's something happening every millisecond. And it's just like, everyone's on to the next thing, but it's just like, dude, this is real life. How do you balance that? You have this huge Instagram following, really dedicated fans. But I, I mean, I've checked out your Instagram. Like, you don't over filter things. It seems like you're really trying to put forward the most authentic Justine. Is well, thank that fair? you. Yeah. I mean, you just post. post I appreciate you, you saying that because that's not what some people think. Oh, really? I don't know. I just looked at your vacation photos from Jamaica and I was like, yo, that's her. And that felt really good for me to see. You know, you're not like, you know, face tuned and all that crazy stuff. Mm. I'm just chilling, man. I'm just like, uh. This is me. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How has your relationship with social media evolved? Because you kind of got your start kind of on Tumblr, right? And so you've kind of been in the social world, and that's helped you build your career. How has that relationship with social media changed and evolved, though, for you? Um, it's definitely a love-hate relationship. As I grow older, I'm, I, I feel like now I'm in a place where I'm a little bit, a little bit more like happy. But I was very self-conscious about like things, and. I had to have like a little sit down with myself recently and be like, you know what? Like when you were on Tumblr and doing all this other stuff, like you didn't care. Like it's ridiculous looking back at the, I was just talking about this in the green room. Like the things that I would post and the things that I would wear, I was talking about like my first like fashion week, what I thought I was doing. Oh my, horrendous, horrendous. I literally was wearing a tiara green, forest green lipstick and like camo pants and an American apparel, apparel, what is that? Apparel? American apparel, like tank top. And I was like walking around Soho like, yeah, fashion week, you already know, we out here. Just like, I wasn't even going to any fashion shows. I was just literally like walking around the streets with like a group of my friends. And now I'm just like, compared to today, like going to fashion shows, I'm just like, well, I've come such a long way. Like this is what I thought I was doing to what I'm actually like doing now and like, I'll give it five more years. It'll be like, what was I doing five years ago? I know. I mean, that's your 20s, right? You're like constantly evolving and changing, and that's why they're so fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're fun, but... <laughs> well, the 20... The 20 I don't know. 22 was, 22 was a rough year for me. Fair. 24 was probably I hate, I hate 20. If I could, like, delete 22, I would. No, but watch. You'll learn something from 22. You'll be 32, and you'll be like, that year set up all the stuff I'm doing now. Watch. Watch. Okay. I'm gonna hold you to that call, one. <laughs> call me up in ten years, and you'll be like, "Yeah, that was a that was a teachable time for me." Oh, that's what Oprah says, anyway. I don't know. 
<laughs> so let's talk about some of your upcoming projects. Well, first, let's talk Ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. I love so much. Thank you. I mean, so much fun. Uh, the thing I love about your music, it, it is true R&B. I feel like I'm like back in the 90s. Thank like, you. And it's so sex positive, and it's just really encouraging young women to be confident in who they are. Mm -hmm. So going forward, I know you're working on another project. Are those similar themes, or are you maybe more focused on different things now? Um, it's definitely similar themes. I feel like because it's just... It's a lot about what's going on in my life, and I, I don't know. I guess like, I'm a lover. Like I, like I'm filled with like so much love. So I'm always like giving that, and that's always like getting taken advantage of. And I'm just like, ah. but it makes for great music, I guess. Unfortunately, like that you gotta love you. Like even that, even that. Like I see that online. Like oh, I hope like he breaks her heart so that he can like write a great album. It's just like, bro, what? Like, this is my life. Yeah, like, why do you want this person to be sad just so they can write an album for you? Like, I do really love your music, though. I don't want no, you to be no, no, sad, No, 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 though. thank you. I don't want you to be sad. No, this one's a lot, a lot more, like, confident and just, like, still, like, a lot about love. Love is just very universal, and I feel like most music is about love. Um, but definitely there's one song that I cannot wait to put out that I did um, with these producers, Day Trip, here. And like a little studio here, like down the block. Um, but it's really, really dope. I, I'm, I'm like extremely excited for you guys to hear the music. And uh, what is your process like? Do you, how much do you write? Do you write with people? Yeah, I like What's to co-write because me, like, I'm very like indecisive, and I will like record that one line five million times, and I'll just be like, is that was it? Was it okay? Like, was that? Are you sure? Are you sure? No, it was bad. No, 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 I'll do it again. Like, I'm, I'm that person that will, like, continuously do that one thing over again. That's why, like, I have to, when I work with someone, like, a vocal producer that I really, really, like, think is awesome, I always have to have them there because they'll stop me. They'll be like, Justine, you're bugging? Like, that was fine? Like, let's go to the next line. And then I'm just like, okay, great. And, like, but even in doing that, I'm learning myself to, like, trust, like, my instincts. And be like, okay, that was, that was good. Like, let's go on to the next thing. But um, yeah, I like to co-write because I like to have other like ideas flowing in the room because sometimes I may know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. And so that person can like help me like get my words out. And um, you never know, like when there's other energies in the room, like what you can come up with. Is there anything in your life that you would never sing about? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, no, <laughs> I don't know. And you've had some really cool collaborators, and you mentioned all the amazing producers you've worked with. Um, what is maybe some of the best advice from somebody in the industry that you use to just kind of keep you going or motivated when it gets kind of tough? The best advice, someone who's, like, really close to me that always tells me, like, He's like one of my best friends is James Fauntleroy, who's an amazing, amazing songwriter. He's written, if you guys don't know who he is, like you guys should check him out. He's writ probably written like one of your favorite songs that you sing all the time. Um, but he's always telling me, I, my foot keeps slipping, I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, he's always telling me, it, which is funny, but every time I'm like going through like a heartbreak or something, he's like, Justine, I told you, you gotta like chase the paper, not the boys. Like you gotta just chase the paper. like." They'll be there. Like you gotta just, and I'm just like, all right, you're right, you're right. Every time, like, I go to him, he's like, I don't know how many times I gotta tell you this. Like, you just gotta focus on like getting the bag and be, and like being happy, and then like all that other stuff comes later. But you even wrote that in build, right? Yeah. You say like, I'm gonna focus on me. Yeah. Since I can't build a man, I'm gonna work on who I am. So what are your uh, steps for doing that? How do you stay focused on? you and not kind of chasing all this other stuff um i guess i'm kind of just like i don't know a lot of my even like i ran into like old friends recently they're like wow there's something really different about you like you're just like i don't know i'm just like being me again i feel like i was in a bubble and i was like so like just worried about like what people like think about me and i'm just i don't care anymore like i really really don't <laughs> So good, and like you said, you like uh, you spend all those years and it's caring. Just a, yeah, it's like, a lot of energy too, like caring awesome. about what people think about you. It's really like draining. Yeah. Like when you just live your life, the life that you want to live and the way you want to live it, it's just like, whoo. Mm -hmm. 
And then you just start surrounding yourself with people who are positive. Exactly. My friends are definitely, like, my real, real friends are definitely um, just there for me and supportive of me just, like, being happy. And we like to do, like, weird things, like take walks and, like, do more. I, I posted, like, a morning tea ceremony on my Instagram the other day, which was so dope. It's, like, a form of, like, meditation, but, like, instead of just sitting there in quiet, like, you're, like, focusing on, like, making the tea and pouring the tea and, like, ambient music playing. And it was just like, wow, I should do this more often. Like, I like surrounding myself with people that can, like, teach me new things. Have you been to Japan? No. They do amazing tea rituals there, so if you're on that right now, you should go to Tokyo. I mean, like, how did I get there? Like, where? I could book you a flight. I know a guy. Okay. We could work on it out. Let's go. All right. (laughs) Well, there are a lot of people in the audience who love you, and I know they have some questions for you, so let's go to the audience before we get out of here. Who do we have first? Hi. Oh. Hey. Um, oh, that this guy. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> um, I've been a fan for a really long time, like from Sky High, like those days. Oh my like, goodness. I was like in middle Thank school, you. and now I'm like a junior in college, which is like really. Weird. I love when people like tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, one question I have for you is like how you describe your growth in music, going from mixtape to like multiple EPs and your debut album, which finally came out this year, and I love. Thank you. Um. I guess how do I describe my growth? It's just, I guess it's just like any of you guys sitting in the audience. Like we're all growing and learning about ourselves. Like it's, it's, I'm, it's no different really. Like all the experiences that like I've been going through, like the heartbreak, the loves, the, the confusion, like just expressing that through my music. It's just like we probably have different jobs, but I'm able to like express that through my music and I'm grateful that I'm able to do that and connecting with people like you from and all around the world is just like amazing and yeah. Are there any other performance performers whose uh, careers you really sort of respect and would like to model or are you for forging your own path? Um definitely forging my own path. Like I don't think that it's smart to compare your path to like other people's because that's just not realistic everyone is so different and everyone's timing is different like stressing yourself out about like but Beyonce did it like this so I gotta do it like that it's like no bro you're not Beyonce and that's not to say that that you're not amazing it's just like don't strive to be like Beyonce strive to be like you like (laughs) and that's what you're doing next question Hi, Justine. You are such a beautiful and brilliant vocalist. Um, oh Heaven God. is my uh, go-to happy jam. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, is there anyone that you want to collaborate with who you haven't collaborated with? Oh, there's so many people I would love to collaborate with. Um, I guess one really... That wind is crazy. Can you feel it through the... No, I just heard it. It was oh. loud. It was like, hey, y'all. But... Um, <laughs> Um, I guess someone that I would love to collaborate with uh, would probably be, like, Missy, Missy Elliott. Um, I definitely would love to work with her and for her to write for me. I think that would be, like, awesome. And you know what? I could see that happening because she's, like, coming back out with more stuff. Like I've been around her, like, a couple yeah. of times, but I always get real nervous, and I just don't say anything. I just walk away. Like, I do I that. say something. I do that sometimes. It's It's probably not good, but, like, I don't know. She's just standing there, and I'm just like, Missy's I gotta such go. a supporter, though. I feel like if you said something next time. I don't know. I know. I don't know. I guess it's the environment <laughs> that we're in that makes me, like, really nervous. I even do that. Like, every time I meet Beyonce, even though I've met her, like, I just get really scared, and I walk away. I mean, that's understandable. It's Beyonce, so <laughs> it's okay. I'm just like, I don't, am I supposed to be here right now? I got to go. <laughs> You're like, this is her room. Uh, last question. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, big I love fan. your hair. Thank you. Big fan since, you know, vocal major days. Um, so since from then to now, how do you balance um, this career and being able with self-care? And, you know, what have you learned about life and yourself and just being able to balance all of that? Um, I think I'm still learning. Um definitely still learning. I mean, I'm only 23 and I have a lot left to learn in life, but something that I guess I've learned up to now is to just really be vocal about my opinions. And it's kind of, 
this industry can get like really, really like confusing because everyone has their idea of like who you should be and what type of artist you should be and what type of music they think you should be making. And you'll get so caught up in being like, hmm, like maybe maybe I should listen to this and maybe I should listen to that. And then you just get you get really confused. And I feel like you just have to know when to take advice, but not let it fully control your whole entire like career. And so I feel like I've 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 reached that point right now. I've on my way to reach that point. And um yeah, just being just being true to who you are, and that sounds like <laughs> I hate saying that, but it's just like it's real. It's like it's just real. Have you had a moment where your gut you followed it and it was right musically? Yeah. Um I guess with this single right here, I was like, I fought for it because like not everyone on my team was like we should like go with this. And I was like, no. I kept like pushing it back out there, like, no, no. No, no, this is the one. I love this song. And I don't really care what you guys think about it. But then and eventually like everyone got on board and I was just like, yeah. Well, I know you have some new music you're working on for next year, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, Build is streaming, guys. So you can listen to it on repeat like I have. Mm -hmm. Give it up for Justine. Thank you.